At the very beginning of this week's Parsha, we're told that the oil for the menorah in the Mishkan, the tabernacle, and then later in the base of Mikdash in the temple, has to be from olives and it has to be the purest of the pure. The sages explain that means that it can only be the first couple of drops pressed from each olive. What's interesting is that there's a different law for the flower offerings that were brought in the Mishkan and then in the temple. Those also have to be from olives. They also have to be pure, but not the purest of the pure. They can be from the third, fourth, fifth drop, etc. One commentator says we can tease out a beautiful lesson from these differences in those two laws. The light of the menorah represents the Torah. It represents spirituality. When it comes to spirituality, spend the extra dollars. Don't cut any corners. Insist on the best. But when it comes to physicality, represented by the flower offerings, most of which were eaten, not only do you not have to spend the last dollar or the extra dollar, but it's a good idea not to. You should exercise restraint with respect to your personal consumption. And if we're honest with ourselves, and I'm speaking to myself as much as to anyone out there, do we do that? Do we prioritize spending on the commandments versus spending on ourselves? Back in the day, if a guy wanted to wear a custom suit, it wasn't so easy. I had to get on a plane, fly to London, go to Savile Row, hope to see James Bond in the waiting room. Now, it's much easier. All sorts of custom options, and you can customize anything on a guy's suit. The buttons and the lapels and the belt loops and the lining, you name it, you can make it yours. Fully bespoke. And I admit, I have a few custom suits in my closet. But I also admit, to my horror, I noticed a few days ago that my talus bag that holds something pretty precious, pretty important spiritually, my talus, the bag is fraying. Now, I would never wear a frayed suit, custom or off the rack, and I'm sure I'd notice it right away. And here my talus bag's frayed. Probably has been for some time, and I didn't even notice it. I've got to correct that. Or consider this, you book a vacation, you pick the venue, you pick the hotel, three stars, four stars, five stars, maybe you can afford six or seven stars. And the room category, and you try to finagle an upgrade because it's your anniversary or your birthday, who knows what. And then you pick and you book the activities. And then sometimes the light bulb goes off and you remember, oh, wait a minute, I should really check where's the closest synagogue so I can pray on vacation. And you find out, Uh uh-oh, the closest synagogue's an hour away. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Well, why not first figure out where the synagogue is and then book the hotel? Now, I can't tell you that this always happens. I'd be lying. But at least in this one particular instance, right now, I'm in a hotel. I'm filming for my hotel room in South Florida. I'm down here for a few speaking engagements. And the closest synagogue, I'm proud to say, is five minutes away. Not a coincidence. I've had a long day. I am tired, but five minutes away, I hope to be there tomorrow morning.